Hello, folks. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to a star another star sector tournament. This time organized by our very own the Wikifish. Hello, the Wikifish. Good morning. Very early morning. <laughs> very early our morning. special agents have gained information about something that could change the history of humanity. Something. Something. Something, something still Thank you, alive. Sub. Something. Something still subscribed. Yay. So yeah, we got a new Star Sector tournament um, organized by the Wikifish, who's currently putting the, the, the rules in chat, but uh, would you like to explain? Maybe it'll be faster for you to say them out loud. <laughs> what the rules for this Absolutely. tournament are? Alright, so we're going for PvP 1v1. It is faction or theme based. We have 200 total deployment po points for the costs, for the holds. Uh, no other considerations. No cost for weapons nor hull mods. Uh, weapons are limited generally uh, to vanilla plus ship and weapon pack plus their faction weapons. Some of the factions have said that they, they have enough weapons themselves and they're only allowed to use those ones according to whoever made the mod. Uh, there is a soft preference for using the faction weapons which most people have held to very well. Uh, fighter wings are limited. Uh, 14 total modular fighter wings and 150 total OP of modular Sensation! Wings. It happened! Built -in Finally, the moment we have all dreamed about! People have taken advantage of that. <laughs> I can imagine. Limits on modular safety overrides to 60 DP total of hulls. Mm -hmm. Unlimited built-in safety overrides. Uh, we do have officers, but they have uh, only regular skills, no elite skills. They've got five skill points total. So either one officer with five skill points, or five officers with one skill points, or something in between. Uh, blanket ban on vanilla remnant and Omega equipment. Okay, yeah. So thank you, Bosco, for the oh. gifted sub to Wikifish. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> is this Wiki's voice? Yes. <laughs> this is really, no, this is Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Let's flip over to this, shall we? Hang on. Uh, And, oh, my stream to you has ended, hang on. How dare it. Don't, don't turn off the camera, that's not... Mid 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 midline is, of course, the best. Objectively. Oh. It's very difficult trying to get this to... Nah, come on. Because the second I tab out, Discord forgets that the Star Sector exists, then it... Damn it. Damn it, Star Sector. No! I have to catch it. It's fucking annoying. <sighs> yeah. Got it. I think I got it. We, we have had a lot we have had a lot of previous tournaments. Generally speaking, the, the, the balanced target is that all the modded content should be slightly less than vanilla. <laughs> but it's not always the case. Um is the stream working for you, by the way? On Discord. Uh, yep, looks good here. Good. Uh, ooh. Ooh? I'm going to check the Discord. I'm going to check my Get Discord. Get that train well. going. Sekakotos, and thank you for the bits. Much appreciated. Yep, looks good. Okay. One second. All right. Okay. So we have here, we have... It's there are six, there are eight. There are eight players in the. the we're doing prime league. Do you know who's doing who's doing the um, under underdog league, league yet? Some people put their hands up, but it's not certain yet. Okay, so there's, there's two leagues. There's the prime league, which is what I'm doing, and then some other people do underdog league. There are eight mm -hmm. total players in the prime league, so I'll quickly go through them now. We have Steve Synapse, um, running vanilla low tech. We have Roddy Great running some. Imperium. We have Pyrophage running some Shadow Yards. We have Bosco gifting a bunch of subs, thank you very much. Um, we have Forest Fighters running some um, Arcanisis. Idiopathic is doing mid uh, Midline. Pixie Code running Magellan, which is, the, which is the one faction I don't much know a lot about. Pure Tilt running some Scalar Tech, and Pixie Code has very kindly chosen to also do high-tech vanilla, simply because we were a man down. So yeah, we're very, very thankful. And it, be, it won't be a long stream, because it's just four matches. Four matches, four um, best of ones. So mm -hmm. depending how fast you are killing each other, we won't be here very long. 
which is good because it'll be going for pretty much every week for the next seven weeks, I think, isn't it? Is that how, that's how that working? Is work, does that work out in seven rounds? Yeah. yeah, about seven rounds. So every week for about seven rounds. Um, okay, let's go for the first match. The first match is C Synapse versus Ruddy Grades. So what do we have? On C Synapse side, we have a cathedral with anything unique in this cathedral. We have some Aegis up at the front and some Hurricane Mervs, some HVDs, Expanded Missile Racks, IPDAI, Automatic Repair Units, some Mining Pod Wings, Makeshift Shield Generators on the, on the hangars. On the sides here we have Inferno Mervs and more uh, High Velocity Drivers. The middle has more Inferno Mervs and more Mining Pod Wings. And the engine has more Inferno. So it wasn't one, two, three, four. That's what eight Mervs, eight Infernos, and two Hurricanes. Yeah, it's definitely got reach. <laughs> it has a lot of reach. It has a lot of reach. Uh, we have also three Prometheus Mark IIs and an Atlas Mark II. Very much low tech aggressive. We have a lot of plasma flamers, uh, flare guns, more of the mining port auxiliaries. So many pods are literally costing zero. That does that mean it doesn't actually count against the 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 limit of fighters at all? Correct. So they still bump up against the fourteen total modular fighter wing limit, but they won't bump up against the cost. And mm -hmm. a few people have abused this, and they've gone mining pods, and then gone maybe some uh, uh, twenty six or thirty OP fighters. Hmm. Hammer barrage there. Fender missile racks, shield shunt, uh, assault packages, militarized subsystems, of course, because. All the Atlas and the Prometheus are civilian ships, so Mutual Subsystems to counteract the downsides of that. Expanded Magazine's Ballistic Rangefinder, which is a new one. I don't, rec I don't recall Ballistic Rangefinder. Oh. Yeah, I'm still getting used to it. So if the largest ballistic... Oh, yeah, so the it's the normalizer, isn't it? it? Basically, if you have a very long-range weapon, it makes a shorter range. If you have a very short-range weapon, it makes a longer range. It normalizes your ballistic range to about 900, which is interesting. For a fairly hefty OP cost, but hmm. uh, people are getting some good usage out of it. Absolutely. Uh, then we have so all the, th the three Prometheus are set up the same, Promethei, and then the Atlas is set up with two Squalls, four Plasma Flamers, and two Aegis Flat Cannons. With it, why, I wonder why a DTC rather than a... One, are they, is there I reason? queried it. It's a, it's a stylistic choice. Okay, fair enough. We've got, we went for the Dardicated Targeting Course specifically on purpose. Okay. Hmm. It just adds it doesn't there's, reduce there's, there's... Does it not reduce it? Those plasma flamers are definitely something to watch out for. That is quite a crazy weapon. Oh, it doesn't reduce range, it just adds range. Okay. Incre mm -hmm. If the largest ballistic slot is large, increase the range of small weapons by 200 and medium by 100. If it's otherwise, if it's a medium... It oh, okay. So it just makes it in increases the range of your smaller guns to so hopefully they match the bigger guns. Okay, that's, that's actually better than that. That's yeah, and so again, particularly once we start talking about the more brutal short range guns, like those plasma flamers, it really makes a difference. And hybrid weapons and ballistic slots gain double the bonus. So it really favors the hybrid weapon. Do we have hybrid weapons here? Yeah, we have the plasma flamers, the hybrid weapons. So the range increase for these will be drastic. Hang on. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading this right, does that mean that yeah. we, have, we have an 850 range plasma flamer? <laughs> Which was specifically balanced around having 450 range. Yep, the players have done it again. Oh, yes, it's, it's, it's 200 for this and doubled because it's hybrid. That's an 850 range plasma flamer that actually might be plasma flamer might be useful <laughs> oh it is like I, I, I liked them initially when they were 450 range like this is uh <laughs> they do good work until they run out of ammo yeah 550 specifically oh uh, is this this is the unmodified range according to ballistic range finder it gets plus 200 because it's a, a medium weapons up by 100 and then doubled again uh, okay right yes okay i understand it gets another 200 and we see the expanded magazines on there just to really stick the knife in. Yep, of course. Okay, and the, the, that's that. That we have Sea Synapses. <laughs> Hello, boys. I'm back. Fleet. Any names you want? Mirvana, Fago, Sleep Paralysis, Ill Advised Variant, Lion's Gourd, and 10,000 Lobsters or Bust. And we have Ruddy Great's uh, Imperium Fleet running a Caesar class, which I'm always, I'm mm. always happy to see Imperium. I do like the Imperium. Ships. Yeah, big crowd favorite. Big crowd favorite. Pulsar repeaters, heavy machine guns, but of course the Crocia Moors in the middle. Pretty much just bounce around the Crocia Moors and a ton of heavy armor. Imperial targeting package as well. Ton of heavy armor. Ton of armor, ton of hull. Hanging back and just 
hitting things with a very big gun. Prometheus Mark II has no large, but I guess it does. It has an Aegis flat gun right there. Um, then we have a couple of dictators running Sabos, particle guns, arc assault cannons, uh, Solus cannons as well. So a lot of anti armor here. A lot of anti. Oh. Oh. And some kinetic as well, so it's a good and My favorite gun ever, the proximity charge launchers. Yes, yeah, so I never oh, really got to MVP play with them. Time. I never really got to play with them after they got changed. Because I remember when they were all oh, they're very good. Hmm. Need to do with fighters, need to do with missiles, need to put some pressure on some ships, they just work. Hmm. We have a Sebastos running his own Phantom Beam Cannon, a couple more Sabo pods. Actually, this is very anti-shield. Sabo SRM pods. So and a lot One of thing that we things. haven't seen this tournament, that we've seen in a lot of previous tournaments, is those Sabo pods. Hmm. I mean, we haven't seen them a lot of them. There's quite a few of them here. Uh, pre previous tournaments, though, they've been all over the place, but uh, we've, we've actually been quite lucky. Are you I running think. the vanilla? Have you, have you nerfed them? Because a lot of tournaments specifically nerfed uh, the no, Sabo pods. No, this is vanilla. Oh, God, vanilla. these are vanilla pods. Okay. These are the vanilla pods. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so two Sebastos and two Legionaries running an Alice rocket pod wings. Uh, Telemoto cannons. Sure it's vanilla. Sorry, I'm pretty sure it's vanilla. I would, I would double check that. Hmm. The AI mod does get a little bit quirky. Uh, and we have an, a Lynx, a single Lynx, running a bunch of um, ion pulsers and ion cannons and ion torpedoes, as well as a regular uh, Typhoon Reaper launcher, and a, a single Basilius running a bunch of fun days, which is. I guess there to, to counter the large amount of fighters you can see this time. Mm. The Prometheus has large hybrids and large ballistics. Oh, does that count? Interesting. And they finally nerfed the vanilla Sabos. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okie dokie. Anything interesting name-wise we have here? Once in a Lifetime, bon Born Under Punches, Houses in Motion, Treberuna, Dimachus, Heavy Metal, Third Questioning, Something Warm and Pure, and the... I, don't, I can't tell if that's intentional or if that's just the name of the things as they are here. Um, we shall go, we shall reset to make sure I haven't actually screwed anything up, and we'll go for our first match. So the big question, will that cathedral actually do anything useful? <laughs> Good question. They are equally matched in DP. You can get one DP shy of maximum, but it is equally matched. And it's a very tall fleet versus a slightly wider fleet. Five caps, essentially, or well, four caps and essentially a super cap versus mm. one cap and a bunch of cruisers and destroyers. Let's go. See how it happens. Zoom, zoom out here and see. Let's start this tournament. For the first match, a bunch of fighters coming out here of the low-tech wing, all mining pod auxiliaries. Mainly there to annoy, because those mining lasers aren't going to do a lot. Oh, I love those mining pods. And they're beautiful. From, from previous tournaments, the only way to survive a mass Sabo strike was the mining pods. Hmm. Because they just physically get in the way. Yeah. Game sound? You got no game sound? Hang on. Oh, hang on. Have we got no game sound? You've got no game sound. Hang on. Let me see if I can fix this up because that should be. There you go. Hang on. Now you've got some game sound. RLGs. There you go. Sorry. Sorry. Now that was my bad. The game sound was definitely turned off. Because this isn't my usual streaming setup, so... <laughs> oh, here we go. Immediate frozen beam cannons. There's no shields, of course, on the um, on the Prometheuses. So, uh, any high explosive coming through there is going to is going to cause some damage. I do worry about that damage taking out the weapons. First shot's coming out against the Kizer as well. But Sebastus taking some there's a legionary oh. le legionary taking a bunch of damage. Legionary goes down first blood to low tech. The second legionary getting hit by a bunch of infernos and hurricanes as well. Um we just came out of that fairly intact. I mean, it's still gonna get wailed upon, but it came out of it fairly intact. So this is actually the danger time because those plasma flames are reloading. Hmm. The Caesar already taking some damage, already lost his frontal armor. Here come a bunch of those Mervs. And getting through. The shield in the Caesar, not that great. 
The Lynx just taking, it's a phase ship, it's just taking some flamer damage there. Okay, here we go. Sneezer coming in, getting some shots into a Prometheus here. Oh, good crochet more shot there. Just takes a chunk out of the Prometheus. Prometheus is on half health there. It's just getting nailed by that beautiful barrage. Prometheus goes down. One all. Although, it was a capital for a destroyer, so advantage very much in Imperial camp right now. Once the Bastos has gone overloaded at the top of the screen there. So low tech suffering from no flux problems. Just the hull. Hmm. So Bastos is waiting to cool down here. Although, again, those Solus cannons, if they get close enough, we'll just start doing a lot of damage to these. Oh, the mines as well. I forgot about the mines. <laughs> I forgot about the mines. Is this about, that Sebastus is overloaded as well, but still alive. So the Lotec can't regenerate health, while the Imperium can regen their flux. So it's, it's an interesting battle. Yeah, oh, the Caesar is overloaded. Although there's no real follow up there. Nope, there is. There's some follow up of Infernos. Oh my god, the Caesar is on no health at all. <laughs> Goodbye, Caesar. <laughs> Wow, the Caesar, I was like, oh, that's fine. No, that's the flux bar. It has no health. The Caesar goes down. Another Prometheus will go down, however. The Legionary goes down. Will the Lynx kill the Prometheus? Nope, it cannot do that. It cannot manage. Manages to avoid the hammer barrage, though. <laughs> Sebastus whiffs the, po the, the photon beam cannon shot, which probably would have killed it. Never mind. Prometheus goes down. One Prometheus to go, one Atlas to go. Sec uh, Sebastos goes down, so we're now to two dictators, a Sebastos, the Basilius, and the Lynx. Versus... Oh, the Cathedral, of course. <laughs> Silly me. I was going to say, I don't think they have enough hull to be able to do this. No, the ca the ca that Cathedral is terrifying. Dictator goes down. Now, does the Cathedral have Plasma Flamers? I, I don't think it does. No, it does not have Plasma, it does not have plasma Flamers. It's got some HVDs, it's got a bunch of point defense, but it does not have plasma flamers. However, what are we dealing with here? Sebastos, Dictator, and Basilius, and Lynx. And uh, Sebastos is kind of terrified right now. I don't blame it, but it's kind of leaving the Dictator out to, hanging out to dry there. Uh, it's also wiggling a little bit there as well. Hmm. With that, with that front armor gone and the AI trying to work out which, which fresh armor side to face towards the enemy. Oop, overloaded Dictator. That's probably the end of the Dictator. Here come their Infernos. There's the Redeemer as well. Never mind, Redeemer doesn't even get... Redeemer retasks to the Sebastos. Right in the shield. Those missiles weren't even intended for the Basilius to went straight past. The ablative armor <laughs> protects the shot there. Is the Lynx down? The Lynx is down, so it's just these two oh, ships now. Flamer. Plasma Flamer goes one. Here comes the Redeemer. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> to be fair, the Sebastos had to um, <laughs> to to turn the shield to face the Redeemer, yep. and just yep. no choice. completely just took Flamer to the face. Wow. No shame, but. Uh, they, that uh, cathedral definitely carrying hard, and those flamers working very, very well. Although all the all the all the Prometheus has died, they must have died in the explosion at the very end there, death by ship explosion of the last of the Prometheus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a first round win to see synapse and that terrifying, <laughs> terrifying cathedral just not dying. Hmm. Next, we have. I'd love to see the stats on the guns at the end of it, but I've, I've I really wish between those nerves and the plasma flamers. That that was a lot of damage. I really wish, um, even even like just for like from like when I'm playing the game normally, trying to figure out like what is working and what is not working in my loadout, mm -hmm. and being able to see a more expanded more expanded breakdown of what exactly every ship did in combat. Because I would like to see to be able to see to make plans based on that, but still not an option. Also, the Kaiser missing pulses because it doesn't have the gunnery skill. 
That is a very good point. The gunnery skill is highly underrated. It makes a huge difference. Mm. Honestly, what do we got here? Reckless, reckless. But you know what? What you were fielding as 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 your skills. We can't we can't see from here, can we? Damn. There's no actual way to see there, is it? Is there? I don't think so. No, we can't really see. In, what the, in the game, you can. In the game, you can, but not no, not from this screen. I don't think. Hmm. Right, round two, Pyrophages, Shadow Yards, which I, can, I haven't seen for ages, and I do love Shadow Yards. And and uh, Forest Fighters, Arknisis. Let's have a quick look here. So, right. We have one, two, three Delphies running Graviton Beams, Light CPCs, an Ion Beam, and a bunch of Camel Particle Darts. Who I don't actually know. What are these? Fire Support Beam Weapons featuring high power and good striking range for a Beam Weapon size class. The beam follows a leader potential that deals 20% of the weapon's DPS in a successful hit. Interesting. Ooh, that's a little ahead of the curve. That's a very high range there. Very high flux per second, in fairness. Mm -hmm. um, the efficiency of the flux per damage is, is again, quite good for energy. Oh, for yeah. that range. 1.29 for energy is pretty damn decent. At a good range as well. I want to see what it what it means with the leader projectile hits. Um... Oh, and again, so for that aerial ship, we're looking at gunnery implants and helmsmanship. Hmm. More gunnery implants, more gunnery implants, gunnery implants. <laughs> gunnery implants, always. Definitely knows his skills. Gunnery implants. Okay, so advanced objects again for more beam range. I'm assuming Kamal counts as a beam for the purposes of advanced objects? Even though it has a, project even though it has a leader projectile? I'm assuming it counts as a beam. And an ITUs as well. They're clearly there to basically grab it on an iron beam and use these beams here and with a bunch of point defenses mm. to support there. We have a Caballoy support cruiser running four, uh, three skinwalker wings, storm blaster. Those are quite scary. Hmm? I mean, the skinwalkers. As well. If you leave them alone, they will definitely destroy things. We have a Lobatus bruiser destroyer with some stellatopods, storm blasters running. Defender Missile Rags, ECM, ECM, and ECCM, and Advanced Optics. F advanced Optics just for the Kamal Particle Darts, it looks like. Hmm. Okay. I was wondering how much ECM we were going to see. It's uh, not not super common. Hmm. So we have another Caballoy. Is it the same as this one? Yep. Technically. And we have a, a Red Wings Varder running <laughs> a bunch of CAS beams as well. Beautiful. Hmm. Murti uh, charged anti ship beams. So, two Murtis, two Divas, but just the Leto pods, the wave pulse repeaters at the front. I mean, I do love the Varder, and also a Shikomi. I still have I still have PTSD from Shikomis. Um, so, definitely the 25 <laughs> worth the 25 OP for single Shikomi there, because that thing is terrifying. Red, so, what is a Red Wings upgrade package? Increased shield or phase efficiency by 10% and increased weapon damage by 5%. Does this cost more than a regular Varder class? From memory, it costs a little bit more. A little bit more DP. I sure hope so, because that's a straight up, straight upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. We have a Ninurta class running a bunch of stilettos as well. Splinter rocket launchers. And hardened shields. Actually, that's a very good shield efficiency there. Not much... Not much Eh, you know what? That, that could be an annoyance. Two of these, another Cavaloy. So three Cavaloys, Lobatus, three Delphi, Varder, and a couple of Ninurtas. If I remember anything from this tournament, I'll be making Wiki if you're so mad he had to drink. <laughs> oh, yes. Again. And so interestingly with SRA, they're, they're one of the few fleets that's nudging up against the, the fighter limits hmm. in terms of amount of OP they're allowed to spend on modular fighters. So these wave pulse are unique built-ins? They're not regular wave pulse repeaters? Apparently not. Yep. 20% yeah, chance to deal just for that hull. 200 extra energy damage to unshielded ships. Ooh, or misses. Um, okay. Then we have Forest Fighters Arknisis running a couple of Alistars, running with heavy plasma drivers, several rod MRMs, Vulcan cannons, pellet guns, Lighthouses. Pellet guns. Excellent. Yep. One, two, three pellet guns at the front here, as well as siege cannon built in as well. And 
running a, cup, a, a pair of Duke gunboats. Tandem flux grid doubles the effectiveness of vents and capacitors and increases the chance for short overloads when generating roughly 20% of your total flux capacity over 3% second and reduces cargo space. Interesting. So if you increases your efficiency of, of vents and capacitors, but if you cr generate flux too quickly, there's a chance that you overload. Yep. I, I absolutely love the Another entire volunteer. design of this faction. Like, we, we want to make guns, we want them to be obscenely long-range, hmm. and the amount of effort that went in to make this balanced is, is, is ex exceptional. Hmm. And they did an amazing job. In, I, I'm always in awe of the work that mod, mod makers do. So we have two of these Alistair classes. We have one, two, three Victoria classes running, again, their own siege cannons, a couple of rods, pellet guns, upscaled shield core, to improve the shield efficiency by 0.2 and shield Ooh. upgrade by 25%, so it's a 0.8 efficiency shield. And a converted hangar running some monodrones. Very long range on that mono monogram railgun, if I remember correctly. Correct, correct. And it, again, they're the sort of fighters where if you leave them alone, they will do a considerable amount of work. Mm -hmm. They'll just hang back and just slowly plink. And we have a Caswell running pairs of Earl Strike Fighters, as well as Needle PDMs, Bongos, I do like Bongos, uh, Micro Pellet Guns, and the Heavy Flak Mines as well, the Caswell. So a couple of Caswells, three Caswells in fact, and one, two, three Taylors running pellet gun, heavy maulers, and doubling with rate of fire as well. And then we have, oh god, the Edith. Oh heavens, an Edith? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Because if the AWAX prevents the use of the seals, that wave repeater's going to have fun. That wave repeater's going to have a lot of fun, because the Vardar does extra damage to unshielded ships. Yep. If it hits. Mm. And flooded injectors on the Edith as well. Which is basically Exodus's SO. So I have a very interesting relationship with speed in mm. Star Sector. So speed... Speed is maximum speed, but not acceleration. Acceleration is a separate stat. And from memory, things like the Edith have very, very good acceleration. Mm. So it's it's not just quick off the bat, but you're going to see it zip around a lot. You're going to see it dodge a lot of shots. The best way not to take damage is to not get hit at all. Mm. And he does armor. Yep. And one, two, three Walsh's. Is, is, it, is there a limit of three hulls per three ships per hull class? Correct. Yep. Okay. Right. And a single fox running an AM blaster as well. Okay, so the both should both both fleets have gone. I mean, I think actually one, five, ten. Arknice has actually hit the twenty the, the twenty hull count. Mm -hmm. This is the first sh uh, fleet we've seen so far that actually has has hit the twenty hull count. But let's see what happens. Shadow Yards versus Arknizes. Let's go. So particularly with the way the AI likes to play with allies, traditionally fleets that don't hit the 20 cap hmm. indicates that one of the hulls is a little bit overtuned. I love Because it, it is such an advantage having the allies there and the AI really likes to push forward with the allies. Uh, when it overloads a ship, you'll see all the other allies dive in and capitalize on it. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just geeking out over the... I, I mean, I love the uh, the thruster art for Shadow Yards. That are like movable thrusters, they're so beautiful. It's gone through quite a few revisions and it's well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Incoming missiles. Siege cannon shots. Immediate string of fire. Taylor class goes down immediately, taking a bunch of beams from the Delphi. Victoria class goes down. You can just hear mines going off as well, from the Caswells. Here come the rods from one of the Alistairs. Alistairs is coming in, although it's gonna, it's two Alistairs versus the Vardar, it seems. Although one of them's slightly distracted. It is two Alistairs versus the Vardar, getting its flux quite high. In come that rods. 
Varder is kind of nimble, though, so it is going to back off a bit. Casual versus Adelphi on the on the right-hand side there. Spins away. And I think that might be a dead Casual, however. That's a lot of beamage over there. But Walsh goes down. It wasn't the cover, it was actually the Walsh that went down. Edith using his AWACS and turning off everyone's armor and everyone's shields. And slight mini overloads on the Alistair's as well. Here and there. The difference in deceleration between these two fleets is quite stark. Mm. One of the balancing features of LOA is that they can't back away too quickly. Elfie goes down. Uh, sorry, Taylor goes down. Duffy took a little bit of damage. Varder's still untouched, really. It hasn't really gone through its armor yet. Oh, here come the Skinwalkers. And that Alistair's already taken a lot of front left armor damage. And the rods of Varda's coming back in again. Varda's taking a smidgen of hull damage. You do not want to lose your armor in front, your shields in front of that Varda. The more Paz is going to go. It will really hurt. Victoria went down. I think we're we've lost quite a few ships now on Arknisis' side. Keep track of everything that's happening. Hard flux on the Varda was very, very high, but it's managed to successfully back off and it should drain. Hmm. It's got an opportunity to drain. Yeah. There it goes. It's choosing not to vent because it doesn't even have to, it's just there specifically just waiting on. And it's pummeling the side of that Alistair. Alistair's on about 20% health, 15, 5% health now. Well, it managed to... Oh! Perfectly timed! The second to last shot did the overload in the last one of the kill. Oh, it was beautifully timed on that one. Not a shot wasted. It's one Alistair down. Not a single ship of Shadow Ears has gone down yet, unfortunately. Cast Two castles go down almost simultaneously. On opposite sides of the map. I don't think I've seen many of the SRA fighters go forward. There was a moment where they slightly went forward on one of the Alistairs, but I haven't seen anything else. I haven't seen the Shikomi. Yeah. Where's the Shikomi? Is it, is the Sh Shikomi should be on the Varder, shouldn't it? it yeah, in. it's been in the thick of combat, though. It might be regenerating them. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's regenerating. Here comes some Skinwalkers. Walsh goes down. There it is. There's the Shikomi. There it is. Another volunteer. <laughs> that sound. Oh my god. <laughs> I still have PTSD from my last campaign. <laughs> and there you go. A shaming, in fact. A full shame. No. Was it? Full shame. Not, no. a, singu not a singular um, Shadow Yard ship went down. I mean, some, a lot of the Delphi's got about maybe about half hull. But early on, um, LOA lost the numbers advantage and th then pushed forward again. Very early on, there was um, a lot of the small ships died quite quickly, and then L LOA. So they did manage to form a coherent battle line, hmm. but then their, their, their inability to back out maybe was a bit of a problem. Hmm. Because the, there was a couple of. They went in early with quite a lot of the few smaller ships, and which got popped immediately by the Delphi's beams. And then momentum never really swung their way. It was, it was always, always in the back foot. There was a moment there when a couple of Alistairs had the Varder in their sight, but the Varder can, of course, um, with the drive plasma relay, just turn around and go whoop. Um, in, in turns, boosts lateral movements. I think all it did is turn to the side, turn that on, and just back away. And yeah, the, the ability to successfully back away from a fight is huge. Especially when something that big. So, you, I've never seen, I don't think, in 
admittedly my recently more limited experience, but I don't think I've ever seen a Varder overcommit because they can just get out quite easily. But yeah, that's a, that's a shame. And it, it, it wasn't running auxiliary thrusters or anything else. No. It's... Which potentially would have made it considerably worse. Yep, it's running just standard things. Optics ATUs, advanced turret gyros. My puppers send you their love. <laughs> Thank you, Reloaded. <laughs> my love to your puppers, too. Reloaded is um, one of my VTuber brothers and has some amazing corgis. So, much love to nice. corgis. Um, right. Next match, we have Idiopathic's Midline versus Pixie Code's Magellan. Let's have a quick gander over here. We have a couple of identical conquests running asymmetrical loadouts. Two love those hellbores. A singular hellbore over the side, a couple of Aegis Flat Cannons. So one side has Aegis Flat Cannon, Hellbore, Ion Beam, and Heavy Needler. The other side is running a Devastator uh, Cannon and an Aegis Flat Cannon as well. So th this, this particular build is quite unusual. Getting the AI to broadside is an art form all of its own. Hmm. Getting the AI to broadside with the correct side <laughs> yes. is very difficult again. So watching the behavior of these ships is going to be quite interesting. Because it definitely wants to keep its left side towards the enemy. Because that's where the HVD is, that's where the Heavy Needler is, that's where the Hellbore Cannon is, that's where the Ion Beam is. The other side is definitely there just to, just to stop anything attacking from the, attacking from the back side. So two of the same here. We have a singular kite running <laughs> some hornets, because of course. We have one, two, three griffins running squalls, hornets, and and a dual flag cannon. ECCMs, of course, and running. Oh, hang on. Yeah, they've got they're running a couple of partisan wings as well. With converted hangers. So that's three partisan wings out on the on the griffins. It's in true love hate relationship with the Griffins. They either do a very lot of out of work or just just pop immediately. Depends how much pressure they're under. Hmm. Well, these ones are definitely designed. To, they're definitely the hang back kind of variants because they've got squalls and hornets. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you kit them out with like with the uh, the typhoons and tornadoes and stuff like that, they're definitely going to be more in the face. So they're, going to, they're definitely going to be almost hanging back and just seeing how much. They can do a couple of Centurions running a single Reaper Torpedo and Unstable Injectors. Move around quickly. Here we go. S-O. Three S-O <laughs> monitors. Oh, God. Why? Um, <laughs> From anything the shields can't tank, it's uh, it's effective. Yep. Yeah, I mean, shield conversion front, hardened subsystems, S-O's. I mean, to be fair, they haven't got um, high efficiency shielding as well. Now he ha he has skipped out on those on those controversial mounts in the middle there, yeah. which is which is okay. That's an acceptable choice. I would have really liked to have seen auxiliary engines on this just to give it a little bit more of a kick of speed, particularly backing out. But this is a very good build. <laughs> I mean, the monitors. It's rare to go wrong with the monitor. They're just again, because unless they, I don't think they've changed it since last I paid. But the AI does not know how to deal with monitors properly. There is a good way of dealing with them properly. Well, it's more, it's more... Try to ignore them. Yeah, but the AI, the AI doesn't do that because the, the AI sees a frigate as an easy target. Therefore, they focus the, mo yep. the monitor down. The monitor is way more survivable than it seems, than it should be. And, and curiously, last time I tested it, those flak cannons, if you leave them alone, if you give them unexposed, if you give them exposed hull, they will actually do a lot of DPS. Oh, yeah. That's the whole thing about fragmentation damage. It's fragmentation damage, so if it's anything other than hull, you're in trouble. But if it, if it's, if it hits hull, then you're fine. That's, two, that's, that's 400 DPS of, of uh, flag, uh, fragmentation damage. And uh, three archers as well, running a bunch of, a lot of hornets, a lot of hornets, even more partisans as well. Disgusting amount of hornets. This is going to be disgusting. This is definitely a, a second a second kite with more hornets. So hang on, let's, let's, let's count the hornets here. So four, 12, 12, 12 is 36, and four is 40. 52, 54, 68, 70, 82, 86, 94, 
102 individual Hornet missiles. <laughs> a lot of those are on archers and griffins, so they'll regenerate constantly. Yep. And the, the amount of squalls that he's paired them with as well. Yep. You wouldn't expect shields to stay up for too long. That's a, there, there's, there are seven squalls in this as well. Fighting against that is a Magellan. So Magellan is, is, is the, the faction here that I don't actually recognize. I don't know Magellan, so you might have to explain Magellan to me. What is Magellan's? What's Magellan's thing? I'm not thing? too familiar with them, actually. Oh, okay. So we're, we're, we're both going to learn this. This is, a, this is a new one for me. So we have a crash off cast missile, pro missile protected cruiser. So robust architecture. Uh, increases weapon durability by 100%. Weapon turn rate reduced by 10. Engine durability increased. And chance of demods on recovery decreased. So. More durable. But slows down turrets. Ablative composites. Maximum damage re reduction by armor is reduced by 60% for a total of 25. Damn! Okay. That's huge. That's huge. Your armor is no longer that useful. But you take the, the damage you take is reduced by 50%. Well... Wait, what? So there's, there's, there's two different mechanics with armor. There's it, it absorbing damage initially as armor. Hmm. And then separately there's the damage reduction. So this takes a massive bite out of the damage reduction. Yeah. So you'd expect things like uh, low-shot weapons like Vulcans and things to do progressively more. Yeah. Also means, again, the, the weapon engine in the hull will stay alive longer, and beam weapon does less damage. Beam weapons and EMP do less mm. damage as well, and built-in blast that's doors as well. So that's, a, that's a lot of hull. That's almost 20,000 hull on this thing. Built-in. Yeah. Okay, so frag damage is going to be quite interesting against them. There's some bulkheads, ITUs, what do we have here? We have some Balefire MRMs, which are energy MRMs with limited charges. We have linked flak guns, which is fragmentation point defense. We have heavy Flenser Seawiz, explosive point defense. One in four oh, rounds nice. is a tracer. 100% of the rounds, 100% of the shots reach 50% of the maximum range, and 50% of the shots reach full range. Interesting. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Um. Oh wow! No, hang on. Particularly with them having an AOE, that's going to be like a very nice AOE spread. Hmm. Oh, I'm keen to see those. Uh, Marbella fire MRMs and cluster auto cannons. Fires a light, a tight cluster between nine and twelve thirty damage kinetic fragments. Okay, interesting. And then a bone shaker cannon at the back. Let's see, and then we have, and what's your system? Your ship system is a torch drive. Temporarily engages a primary burn on the system travel drive of the ship. Massive speed boost for fixed time at the expense of being able to use shields. So is this, is this, is this a broadside ship? Like particularly that mount at the back with those particular angles, that, that, the back mount yeah, that's a broadside did, ship. I think if the ship is far, if the target is far enough away forward, it can probably get the side guns all pointing forward, but it's probably a mm -hmm. broadsider. Uh, then we have a Pori class fleet command battle cruiser running a built-in heavy electron lance. That's say 2,400 damage at 1,200 range every six seconds. A monstrous but always unremarkable heavy energy weapon built into the ship's frame. Running we might have, actually melt armor quite well. 2,400 damage. Then you have some mm. balefire MRMs, cluster auto cannons, light flenser sea whiz. The smaller version of the ones we had before. Blast hammer artillery. Or as a projectile that's susceptible to <laughs> deception, but that's a thousand damage at a thousand range every five seconds. Oh no. And also the detonation is so large it threatens not just the target but the nearby ships as well. <laughs> Actual artillery piece. Um and okay. pro pro projectile vulnerable to interception. That that's an interesting balance choice. Uh, Magellan shield tuning. Projectile shield damage introduced by 15%, beam shield damage increased by 20%. And fragmentation damage to armor and hull is reduced. But they take even less damage from fragmentation damage. Hang on, is that mm. additive or is that that must be multiplicative, surely? Because if it's additive, they take no damage at all from fragmentation damage. Because fragmentation damage is already doing 25% damage. So if it's another 25%, that would be zero. So it must be multiplicative. Which is still ridiculously small number of damage. It's still it's still like six and they only take like six percent damage from fragmentation damage. Okay, and then the fighters themselves are running Sea Whiz and some fighter missiles. Good thing that he doesn't use flag damage. Yeah. And what is your ship system? Your ship system is a 
increases the speed, range, and fire rate of all ballistic weapons. And the ship must be off. The system must be offline for cooling after a short time. Chillers are just talents. Okay. Uh, we have good. Sorry, two canned class patrol ships. They got targeting drones. They improve weapon and sensor range, and have PD lasers, high resolution sensors, auto cannons. Mm. It's always interesting seeing a system like that with modular slots for the fighters, hmm. because that can mess with the, how the fighters go and how the fighter AI works and how much time it actually has on target, increasing the weapon range. We have here some Jeet fighters, powerful, fast, and well-shielded heavy fighters. We have bone chippers, which must be the smaller version of the bone shakers, which are fragmentation cannons. Um. The two of these, we have one, two, three graphs running fusion bomb launchers, which is 2,000 damage every 10 seconds, limited charges. Although, SO'd as well. Yeah, 1,000 range gun. Okay. So, under SO, it's a missile though, so would it actually affect the missiles? Mm, no. No weapon ranges in general, so doesn't actually specify, so it would, re would, would reduce the range of that, but still. And then we have two edger carriers, each of them with three jeet wings, and more. I want to see these balefires, because balefires are being used a lot here, and I don't quite follow what they do. Okay, what, what does the graph do? The graph has a torch drive, and the edgers have command data links, increases the damage speed and defensive capabilities of their fighters. And one, two, three... Armor Shad gunships. Again, more of the bale fires, quad auto guns, revolver cannons, and a built in flak drone with impulse burns and one, two, three deckers with a lot of small ballistics. And one, two, three Yans ones with PD charge dispensers. Which drops flat canisters that explode and they should do damage. Interesting. Missile spam versus missile spam. Yeah, this is missile spam versus missile spam. Basically, it's Hornet versus Balefire and see what works out. I'd like to see what those fighters do. I don't think they're going to survive very much. Oh, the Jeet ones. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they've got def they've got decoy flare launchers as well. So it's, okay, it's, it's basically Hornet versus Balefire, Partisan versus Jeet launchers. Right. 200 versus 200, let's go. Here comes the midline. Kite just ramming into Griffin there, you know, as, as they do. <laughs> Archers at the back, Griffin's it's hanging a back. problem with some of the other fleets when you, you put SO on a bigger ship and it'll just, it'll just ram the little ones. <laughs> it doesn't even bother looking, just straight through. Yep. Monitor's coming in to capture the points. Here we go. Which also means the monitors will draw the initial fire. Yeah, here come I assume the bale fires. Oh my god, there come all the squalls. <laughs> Look at all the squalls. Oh my god. The graph is getting hit by the iron beams there. It doesn't seem to have shielded. I missed I must have missed that when I was looking at them. Look at all Both the bale fires. And look at the bale fires. Bale fire versus hornet down. My FPS does not enjoy this. <laughs> Decker goes down. Al-Marshad goes down. Yans goes down. Look at all the focus fire onto the, onto the monitors. All the focus fire onto the monitors. The bale fire is coming out. The bale fire has some really nice explosion effects, though. These nice, nice little red bursts. Oop, hang on. Centurion. Nope. Damperfield Edger goes down. That's a, that's a first big loss. That's a, that's a cruiser class. Mm. Right, let's see. I haven't seen the big gun fired yet. Oh, that's a conquest rotating. Yep, that conquest. Put it in his PD side forward. Armor shard goes down. Kites out of missiles. Only had like four. Conquest rotates back again. Oh, so I many like missiles. this conquest build. 
It's, it's definitely the correct... The correct... I, I, I don't think it's an accident that they're flanking along the right there. I think they're, they're actually properly using their hellbores and properly turning to face. Yeah. It's always nice when you see a, 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 a broadside work. Cant goes down. Oh. Uh-oh. That's another edger, I think, in a bad place. Hellbore misses. But it's not long for this world. Edger goes down. Cant goes down. So far... Midline is currently... Hasn't taken damage. Graph goes down. Those ion beams have been very impactful. Yep. Taken out quite a lot of fighters. It caused a lot of a lot of ships to back off. Ships really don't like staying in when they've got disabled weapons. Absolutely not. And the... Uh, is the capital, I think. Is that a capital? Is that a big cruiser? I can't tell, but it's being pummeled on all sides. Here come more hornets. Pori goes down. Decker goes down. So many missiles. So the, the hornets are supposed to be uh, armor crackers, or are they supposed to be finishers? No, they're not. So they're, they're, they're too long range to be finishers. I don't think. Oh, I never use them as such anyway. They're too, they're too long range, they're too, like, inaccurate for my, my like, to be finishing. Hmm. You just basically spam I mean, them forever. Vanilla Harpoons are, are quite long range and miss quite a lot, but uh, still finishes. Oof, that is... We're down to very few ships now. Just one left over, I think. Over here. Ah, oh, yes. Forgotten Frigate Battle. This is always one. Ah, oh, and he's used his Reaper. Never mind, here comes an archer with... There's a, there's a, there's a flak... I was gonna say that's a flak drone, but it just got taken out. Never mind, here's another 12 hornets. Here come more hornets. Even on the shield, that's an appreciable amount of DPS. Mm hmm. Uh, it's gonna overload soon. Make sure that... Never mind. That's a shame. Midline did not lose a single ship. Because monitors don't die. <laughs> at all. <laughs> and they went in first. Yep. They were the fastest things on the ship because they were SO'd as well. Hmm. Monitors yeah, don't die. Choice. Monitors do not die. So graphs... Graphs don't have shields. They have 3,000 armor and about 9,000 hull, but no shields. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's idiopathic shaming pixie code. And on to the last so match. We've got both of these fleets, we've got the Mervs. You, you've got to wonder how much, how much PD hate is going to be coming out in round two. Yeah, because the, I'm not sure what, what your rules are going to be for how much people get to change their fleets, but... I've kept it fairly wide, which may be a mistake. <laughs> So they're, 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 they're encouraged to correct mistakes, but I don't want to see people flipping between extremes of offensive. I don't want to see them being all fighters and then next round be all missiles. Hmm. But uh, the, the participants have been pretty good. They've generally been playing to the spirit of it. That's very good. So we have the last match of the day, which is Pure Tilt's Scalar Tech Fleet and Pixie Code's High Tech in um, Vanilla. I mean, this fleet was, con was conceived of about an hour before the tournament started, as far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. And so what we have here, we have a corset running, let's see, a couple of Tachyon Lances. Did you need Tachyon Lances on Scalar Tech, really? Um, four Tools for Flesh Out Guns, a couple of uh, Starlight Tier Launchers. It's been a long time since I've seen Scalar Tech as well. I mean, a pair of Tachyon Lances, you can't really complain. The, the visuals of them get me every single time. Like, you, you look at how busy that is. Mm. That, that is extremely visually busy. And then you look at the small icon on the left, and it just looks clean. Yeah. That, 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 that is absolutely wonderful artwork there. Mm -hmm. And he is very good at artwork. And with a couple of these played drones as well. Basically Terminators with speedy lasers, it looks like. Ah, oh, yeah. Yep. Um, we've got one corset, two verges with heavy blasters 
stable pods and a plasma cannon. Wow. With bleefully triples the cycle rate of energy weapons and reduces flux generation accordingly. That's terrifying for a plasma cannon and heavy and heavy blasters, to be honest. And it's also SO on, a, on an SO ship as well. Yes, it's an SO okay, ship. It's got it's got to kill something. It's sure. going to get that's going to get very close. Turn that on and basically pummel with plasmas and heavy blasters. EMP to high heaven. Ah, the yep, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Um, then we have. One, two, three strands with more tier launchers. And a oh, total of nine Yasuo assault fighters. The EMP is going to be very interesting. So e e EMP propagates in the same way that armor damage does. Hmm. So whenever you see very, very high single shot EMP numbers, you've always got to worry. That'll reach deep into the hull. Instead of actual fighter bays, this ship instead projects a stable wormhole connected to an automated planetary aerospace facility which handles actual fighter operations. <laughs> Due to the planetary... Yeah, they, they, they don't carry things, they just teleport <laughs> the fighters in. Yeah, okay, alright. All right, I can get behind this. Fighter replacement times and their decay from sustained launches are reduced by 15% because they don't actually build the fighters there to just teleport them in yep. from... Yep. <laughs> alright. Yep. Okay, and we have one, two, three frills running with uh, phase lances and sabopods. pods. So mm. that's a lot of sabopods, pods. Right? That's, that's six sabopods pods there. Now, what, what, what's, what's the arc on those phase lances? Because uh, the AI typically does about not like hundred degrees, lances. maybe. Ninety, hundred degrees. I don't know. A bit longer, bit bigger than yeah. It's a bit bigger than ninety. But probably about hundred degree. I, arc. I'm curious to see how many of those lances actually go full time and how many get pulled off as the ship turns. Hmm. And we have one, two, three curls running sabos, small sabos, and blasters. A lot of, a lot of sabos coming out here. More sabo pods on a hem class as well. And to counteract that, we have a high tech vanilla fleet with running two zephyrs, running auto pulse laser and plasma <laughs> cannon. Essoed zephyrs with the Xyphos support fighters, auto pulse laser, and plasma cannon. Right, and right. I, if everyone just deciding the safety overrides plasma cannon is the way to go. Okay, right. Also, just plasma proximity turret launchers. That's it. That's it. That's it. This thing's got SO, plasma cannon, auto pulse lasers, some proximity turret launchers, and that's it. Then we have an apogee, two apogees running hill and squall. Mm. Now, we've seen this in previous tournaments. If these aren't pressured, those are going to be mauling the enemy fleet. Mm. You cannot let that combo survive. Yeah. I mean, hills hurt. You can just let them any 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 length of time. A hill will do a lot of damage. Uh, three Cersei's, which are just there, I think, to be Zyphos carriers. It looks like. Well, no, hang 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 on, hang on, hang on. Cersei, Cersei's is a very uh, it's a curious ship. This is possibly the most maneuverable ship in this fleet. And I suppose it's got it's got some it's got some ion pulsers and antimatter blaster at the front. Hmm. I'm fairly certain the most expensive thing on this ship is the uh, is the Cyphus oh, <laughs> the, the Cyphus wing, and a couple of vortexes running wasps and a pylum with 360 degree arcs and hardened shields. We haven't seen many of those missiles in this tournament, which is which is a little unusual because they they play merry hell with the AI hmm. because the AI will like to raise its shields when it has incoming missiles. And it doesn't particularly care about the range. So yeah. in terms of pressuring ships, in terms of keeping their shields up and not letting them recover, those those are quite impactful. Hmm. These are the new pylons as well, aren't they? These are the pylons, yes, the, the, yes. the, the, the second stage pylons. And the current one, two, two scarabs running triple IR lasers and 360 degree arcs with, with 0.5 shield efficiency. Damn. Uh, and a couple of omens, and three... Three omens running a bunch of PD, and three Mercuries running <laughs> flare guns. <laughs> because of course they are. Right. The last match of today. Scalar Tech versus High Tech Vanilla. Let's see how this turns out.
from the fighters. I think this is going to be quite a nimble fight. Hmm. There's definitely speed here. Let's see. So what's that? What's, they're pushing here with the Circes first. And the Xiphos wings. And the Mercuries are <laughs> shortly behind as well. <laughs> now those Circes, they're not huge. But they have some flux capacity. They can absorb a little they bit of damage. They are dashing forward a bit much, much, maybe. That, that's too a much. little bit much. When Cersei goes down, it's a little bit optimistic there, Cersei. Holy crap! Um, one throw goes down. This is not going to be work. shame. This is not a shame. At least one ship on every side has gone down. Those zephyrs are doing work, though. Holy hellfire! Those zephyrs are doing work. Okay. The corset has gotten its eyes on one of the Zephyrs and has shot at. Okay, here we go. So we have. We're working Ooh, on the that's, shield that's of the shore. Interesting there. positioning. The second that shield goes down, there's, there's a hill looking. There you go. The hill is coming out, waiting for it. Unfortunately, lost lost engines on the Zephyr on the Zephyr here. Will it be able to so recover? The ship's pushing in very deep. Are those apogees getting pressured? I, I don't think they are. No, they weren't. They weren't for a while. So, Oban goes out. down. That's a very high flux. That's a very high flux here. Is it going to get the, the flux down? Yes, it is. Yeah, there's the squalls. And you got to keep it. Make it turn the shield down. So, don't turn the hill off, for God's sake. You have a hill, just keep it on forever. Oh no, one of the Mercury's died. Damn it. No Mercury! Uh oh, here we go. Zephyr versus Corset. Second Mercury goes down. There we go. A lot of iron beams coming out here. Hill goes through. Rips off frontal armor. Ooh. Oof. Gets distracted at the last moment. No, will it change to keep it? Nope, it changes targets. Unfortunately, it keeps going. It is definitely being pressured, but a lot of the SOs are now. So when they can create an opening, those Cersei's can definitely dive in and take advantage, but I'm I'm not seeing an opening here. Both Zephyrs are still alive. And both Apogees. And both Apogees. Let's see what's happening on this side. Frill goes down. Done. Zyphos doing good work. There's the EMP. Yep. Curl goes down. Omen goes down. They're attacking the carriers now. Cersei just in there with the heavy pulsers, with the iron pulser. Another one here in this face. Super high flux. Here comes the hill. Hill is there. It is putting damage into that strand. Alright. So strand goes down. Is bunched up, which is very good. But that Cersei is flanking down the bottom right. Mm. And that's going to start to be a problem. Well, that, stra well, that strand down, there's a Zephyr and an Apogee coming down here to support. Cersei goes down. However, will is the Zephyr close enough? Scarab goes down. Cersei goes down. This strand is so low, will they be able to actually get the kill? Uh, the other Apogee managed to recover. Took a lot of damage, though. Yep. Oh, never mind. Oh, nope. nope. <laughs> Caster's Curse. The strand goes down, though. That's, that's two strands down. And the Zephyr here and an Apogee coming up. The other Zephyr is up, dealing with the remaining Verge. And they so the, need to finish that fight quickly. We need them to get into the main fight. Vortex goes down. The Zenith goes down. One Ooh. of the Zeniths has gone down. Oh, that's huge. It's kind of gone down, so the top is pretty much in the clear now. Mm -hmm. Very good fight so far. The corset has... Are you getting stressed? Yep. That corset has... kind of 
There was some pressure in it early on, but it never really kept it up. Is there anything yeah. turning around? And high tech without most of their fighters, their fighter, the fighter replenishment is going to be quite low. There by you now. go. I'm going to sit in the phrase of that corset, and uh, I don't think you win that flux fight. And just takes attacking lance, two attacking lances to the hull there. Manages to back out in time, but definitely lost some of the engines overload. Oh, unfortunately, very well timed attacking on lance there. May use the fact that the shields are forward facing. Zenith goes down. Yep. Cersei yep. goes down. All that you have left now is a Vortex and an Apogee. A big turn for Scalar Tech, because Scalar Tech was not the back foot for a moment there. Quite a few moments. They managed, they managed... Quite an interesting fight. Yeah, they, 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 they got a couple of kills at exactly the right time. Still managed to keep a strand alive. It felt very knife edge for a long time there, like a, like like the Zephyrs having those two big large engines, mm -hmm. and then one of those engines goes out and causes it to spin. Absolutely huge. All we got left is the vortex now. Ah, uh, they're not good for this. They're not no. good for this. I was, just waiting, I was just waiting. Are we gonna have to wait for the Tekkens to come off cooldown, or is it? nope? Not even then. Very good match though. Very good match though. Mm -hmm. Win goes to. To scale attack, to pure tilt scale attack, but it was a lot closer than it could have otherwise have been. It was an interesting upset. So, what do we feel we're seeing here in terms of MVPs, in terms of hulls and weapons? The whole for the whole we've thing, been... everything we've seen so far. Let's just go back. To the, let's go to fight by fight. Then, I mean, Cathedral kind of wins MVP for the first fight. I mean, you can't. It's unavoidable at this point. With the Mervs. With the Mervs. Although, as I, I as, 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 like as, as, as flamers really did yeah, it for me. The, as a ship. Cathedral wins MVP. As a weapon, mm. the Flamers win MVP. Yep, yep. Most valuable fight, most valuable weapon was definitely the Flamers there. Um, the second match we had the Varder. I mean, the Varder just being able to disengage was was key there. It was the Varder being able, to, the Varder's ability to to get out of a, of a mess which the which the LOA can't do, and the... I, I, can't, I can't think of a good way to pin them down. Like, I'm not even sure mass EMP would work. Hmm. Well, the Varda or the... or the, um... The Delphi, you mean? Either. Hmm. Again, Shadow Yards is always very maneuverable, so... There's definitely... This is true. By design. By design, yeah. absolutely. And we have... Next was, um... The Magellan... Oh, the conquests, because the conquests actually managed to pull off really, really good broadsiding, kept in keeping the, the relevant broadsides facing the enemies at all time. Oh, look, I, I go on and on about hellballs, but it's an amazing weapon. Just, mm. just guarantees no armor left on the field. Mm. And uh, I don't know I wasn't overly impressed with with Magellan's bale fires. And again, I'm not overly impressed with the hornets either. I mean, I don't think it was the hornets that did a lot of the work there. They were just there to busy the screen up and make my encoder suffer. I think it was a lot of the damage was just basically coming, coming out of those hellboards. The amount of missiles in the air did cause a lot of ships to back off when hmm. they maybe could have pushed through. But that, that much DPS in the air is quite scary. Oh yeah, monitors MVP. The monitors, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Specifically the SO monitor, you've got to get in there first. Yeah. I mean, I have a pathological hate of monitors for that reason, just because they are they don't die and the AI prioritizes them incorrectly. Because they are no threat. Like really, in the grand scheme of things, they are the least threatening thing on that fleet. But the AI will target them with a higher priority. And it's one of those things that, well, how do you change that? Do you make the AI target them less often, but then they lose, then what's the point of a monitor now? It's one of those things that it's, there, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. If it doesn't do that job properly, it has no purpose. So from memory, during the design of the monitors, the flak cannons were made built in mm -hmm. because people were putting different weapons in there, or indeed no weapons in there, and it was working too well. It, it, its weakness is almost firing its guns. Oh yeah, I mean, it's there to get to basically use its fortress shield. It's there to basically take be be the be the target for everything and just be able to ignore the damage with fortress shields. So I, I, I don't I don't think this will happen. But what what I would really like to see 
is a, a built-in on the monitor that is a, a, a some kind of rapid-fire weapon and make the AI have meaningful choices about do you want to drop your fortress shield or not? Mm. Because the flak cannons, particularly with, with two of them and having them timed like that, it can flicker its shield down, fire the flak cannons, and flicker it back up. And its vulnerability is very, very small. Especially if you, when you give it things like the, the front... Um front arc shield, which again increases the, the speed with which it can put its shields back up again. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised we didn't see contender cannons. Uh, quite quite unusually, along, among all the mods that we've got, among all the weapons, hmm. uh, contender cannons and flak cannons have exactly the same timing. And so the AI could potentially drop out a lot of HE, a lot of flak to follow it up, and still flicker the shields back up. Hmm. But I think missiles, missiles in general is really where we're at with this tournament. Yeah. I mean, like clearing the skies, incidentally clearing the skies of fighters, but clearing the skies of missiles was was quite uh, impactful for all of them. Yeah, you definitely need some good point defense for, for, for fighters and missiles. I mean, for some fleets, again, for for example, for, for the um, SRD fleet, for, for the SRA fleet, it's definitely there to, to take care of the fighters. I mean, the skinwalkers do do damage and the shikomi is scary. Mm. Whereas for things like dealing with the midline fleet and the Magellan fleet, it's all about the missiles there. There's so many missiles, even if they don't, even if they don't do much themselves, the AI targeting chaos that they cause is problematic. Exactly. Yeah. And then in the, the very end here, I think this was a, this was my favorite match, I think, just because it was the one that was the closest, I think. And it actually had a proper, a proper turn, because there was a moment there where it was like, oh, okay, so... They've managed to push bound, they kill two strands, high tech's got this. And suddenly Zenith pops out, mm. Apogee pops out, the Cersei loses one of the Cersei's dies very early on. The offensive capacity of both of the fleets was extremely high. So it really came down to positioning. And timing a lot of the times. Mm. Yeah, that went very, very well. So how do you think this went for for, for round one of seven? So the initial round is always going to be a little bit interesting because people don't know what the tournament is going to bring. You can take a look at the rules and you can say missiles are, missiles are probably going to be a thing, but you never really know until you see it. Hmm. Round two, I think, is going to be extremely interesting and we're probably going to see the largest delta of change in all of the fleets. So I'm, I'm keen to see what they bring next time. As, as a first round, I think this went very well. Yeah. We didn't have too many surprises. We had, I think, maybe SO ships. As SO ships did generally very well across all the fleets. Oh, they usually do. Yeah, uh, li li I, Lightning's I, I been naming we... background ships forever, and I think I, I, <laughs> I, I would, I would feel, I would feel something was missing if Lightning wasn't here naming background ships because that's yeah. just such, that's just part of tournaments now. Never stop, like, li never, li never stop Lightning. This is, this is, in, this, I love it, one hundred percent. Um, so I was gonna say uh, for, for next week then because. Will people know what they're fighting against? Will people know what the matchups are? Are they just making it? Ah, uh, no, not ah, specifically. They, spe they specifically don't know. I, 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 if I tell them what they're going to be fighting, there's going to be an obscene amount of specific hate coming out against those fleets, and that's not what we want to see. We want to see a generalist solution. I like this. I like this very much. Yeah. So next week will be will be round two. Everyone will because there are eight people, so every mm -hmm. person will play seven matches. And I'm very interested to see what happens next week. It'll be very interested to see the evolution of the fleets as 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 we move on week to week. I think one of the weeks in the middle of November might have to be a different day, just because I've got something on the Thursday. But That's right. Yep. I'm in, I'm very interested to see where this goes. Very. Oh, we didn't have a timeout, did we? Hmm. No, no but timeout. All no, the no. matches were were very very snappy. Matches were snappy. The, the fleets were. We didn't have anyone who was annoyingly lack not aggressive. Mm. Every single time there's been a tournament so far, we're like, oh my god, it's not aggressive enough. Not oh, particularly aggressive. for round one, like people are still learning how the AI works. And, yeah, there's, there's always one who sets everything to cautious. But mm. no, not here. This was, this was very good. Mm. Very, very good. Uh, so yeah, we're back next week at the same time. It's the same time just because time zones are a bitch. It is unfortunate. Mm. Um, actually, my clocks change on Sunday. Do your clocks change as well? Are you not? Do your clocks not change? Uh huh. I will have to double check. I don't think so. Not down here. Yeah, because my clocks go back an hour. But elsewhere in the world, they might. My clocks go back an hour on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I'll be on GMT rather than GMT plus one. So we'll have to figure out what that does for time. But we'll we'll keep people Should posted. Be okay. Should be okay. Yeah, we'll keep people posted. Again, timing is 
annoying just because people are all spread all over the world and time zones are unfortunate. Uh, look, look, pure, pure, pure tilt. Between, he, between here and the next round, I'm not going to burn monitors. It's not going to happen. But suggest some changes. What would you change about the monitors? Let, let's see it in chat. What happens if you remove the fortress shield from the monitors? The trash. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, they, they just can't survive. It's, it's, one, of those, it's, one, um, of those, it's one of those things. The monitor, the monitor has a specific function. If you mess with that in any way, they have no purpose. So with, without the fortress shield, if they're surrounded by fighters, they do very good work in, in, a, in a dedicated anti-fighter role. Um, they, can, they can rotate incredibly quickly. They can get all their guns to bear very quickly. Uh, they're quite good for it. Um, not really for anything else. They, they, they don't really have enough zip to be able to flank around ships and use the flak cannons as direct fire anti-ship. Mm. I had my portrait properly, I got scammed. Well, we didn't have time to test anything, did we, Pure Tilt? I couldn't test your fleet. <laughs> There's no testing to be done. Ah, but yeah, I think we're going to call it there because... Very happy with that. Yeah, that was very good. And I think because there are only four matches a week, it'll be quite... The streams will be quite short. It was a bit longer, I guess, because it's good through all the ships. And as of the following weeks, we'll really only go over the changes, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But, um... I think we'll carry on. Thank you very much for streaming. Well, thank you very much for, for organizing the tournament. Thank you much for all the players for for adding their ships to the to, to, the, to the tournament. All the mod makers as well. I mean, the AI, the AI mod inherently makes all this possible. <laughs> the AI battles mod. But yeah, thanks so very I, much. I, I, I do feel a little bit bad for the mod authors because this has been unusually um, burdensome on them. Oh, because it? unlike previous tournaments, so usually the tournament organizer sets out the rules very, very specifically, and they say, like, for this mod, we're going to be using these rules. Ah. For this one, we've done something a little bit different, and we've said, uh, participants, go to your mod authors and say, how is this supposed to be played? Does this faction need to use vanilla weapons, or do we, do we remove vanilla weapons for them? Hmm. And so the mod authors have actually done a lot more work than normal. So thank, thank you very much for them. That they've been generally very good about it. A huge thank you to the mod authors then. All right, that's me done. I think I'll put this. I'll put this up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, uh, so if, if you if you if you ever miss a tournament on the Thursday, it will be up on, on my YouTube channel on the Friday. Um, I'm back. To, I'm streaming tomorrow night and Saturday night as well. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Now we'll catch you all next time, I suppose. Bye bye, folks. Say bye, Wikifish. Excellent. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.